Hey students, welcome to another video. Today, I'll be touching on reproduction in humans. We will look at six main guiding questions, namely, what is sexual reproduction in humans? What are the male and female reproductive parts in humans? How does human life begin? What characteristics do parents pass on to their young? And how similar is sexual reproduction in flowering plants and in humans? Without further ado, let's get started. Do you know what sexual reproduction in humans is? Reproduction in humans require a male to mate with a female. During mating, the male and female come together so that their reproductive cells can meet. Reproduction, which involves a male and a female, is known as sexual reproduction. The human reproductive parts are important for this purpose. Now, let's find out more about the male reproductive parts. The male reproductive parts of the human body are the testis and penis. Take note that testis is spelled as T-E-S, T-E-S, the plural form, as shown in the label in the diagram because the label points to two testis. Testis in singular form is spelled as T-E-S-T-I-S. -E the male reproductive cell produced in the human body is called the sperm. What are the functions of the male reproductive parts? The testis develop and produce sperms, the male reproductive cells, and the penis helps to transfer the sperms into the female body. This diagram shows the side view of the male reproductive system. As we can only see one testis in this diagram, thus it is singular and we spell testis with an I. Next, we have the female reproductive parts in humans. The female reproductive parts in the human body are the ovaries, fallopian tubes, womb and vagina. These parts are located inside the body. Take note that the plural form, ovaries, is used in the diagram because the label points to two ovaries. In singular form, it is known as an ovary. The female reproductive cell that is produced in the body is called the egg. Let us talk about the functions of the female reproductive parts. The ovaries develop and produce eggs, the female reproductive cells. The fallopian tubes transport the egg from the ovary to the womb. The womb is where a fertilized egg develops. And finally, the vagina is a muscular tube leading from the womb to out of the body. This diagram shows the side view of the female reproductive system. We can only see one ovary in this diagram, so we use the singular form to label it. Let's move on to our next guiding question. Have you ever wondered how does human life begin? The nine-month journey leading to the birth of a baby begins when a male and a female mate. When one sperm meets an egg, they fuse. The fusion of the sperm and the egg is called fertilization. Fertilization occurs in the fallopian tube as seen in the diagram on the right. Many sperms reach the egg, but only one sperm can fertilize the egg. The fertilized egg starts to divide to form more cells. It attaches itself to the wall of the female's womb and continues to develop and grow. Here's a quick animation to summarize the first two steps, fertilization followed by the attachment of the fertilized egg. Organs begin to form and the developing baby obtains nutrients from the female's blood through the umbilical cord. The baby develops inside the female womb and is born about 9 months after fertilization. It's time for a quick concept check. It is wrong to say that all eggs will develop into young organisms. Only a fertilized egg 
where the egg and the sperm has fused, were developed into a young organism. Here is one more misconception. It is wrong to say that a baby develops inside the mother's stomach. Instead, a baby develops in the mother's womb. The stomach, which is part of the digestive system, is not a suitable place for the baby to develop because it contains strong acids. Alright, let's look at our next guiding question. What characteristics do parents pass on to their young? During reproduction, characteristics are passed on from parents to their young. Some characteristics that are easily observed are the types of ear lobe and types of eyelids. Which type of ear lobes and eyelids do you have? Are they the same as those of your parents? The blood type is another example of a characteristic that is passed on from their parents to their young. However, this characteristic cannot be observed. How do parents pass on characteristics to their young? The female reproductive cell, the egg, and the male reproductive cell, the sperm, contains information that will be passed down to the next generation during fertilization, when the egg and the sperm fuse. We have reached our last guiding question. How similar is sexual reproduction in flowering plants and in humans? Sexual reproduction in flowering plants and in humans involve both the male and female reproductive parts and both involves the fusion of the male and female reproductive cells. When flowering plants or humans reproduce, they pass on characteristics from one generation to another. This ensures that each kind continues to exist. Recall from this chapter, in humans, we learn that our characteristics are inherited from both our father and mother. We are formed by the fusion of a sperm from our father and an egg from our mother. The sperm and egg contain information that is passed on to us. Similarly, this passing on of characteristics takes place during sexual reproduction in plants as well. And with that, let us recap the six guiding questions. Can you answer all of them? One. Sexual reproduction in humans is a process which involves a male and a female during mating. This is when such that the male and the female reproductive cells can meet and fuse. 2. The male reproductive parts are the testis and the penis. 3. The female reproductive parts are the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, the womb and the vagina. 4. When a male and a female mate, one sperm meets an egg and they fuse in a process called fertilization. The fertilized egg starts to divide to form more cells. It attaches itself to the wall of the female's womb and continues to develop and grow until organs begin to form. The baby develops inside the female body and is born about 9 months after fertilization. 5. Parents pass two types of characteristics onto their young. Observable, such as the type of ear lobe and type of eyelid, and non observable characteristics, such as blood type. 6. Sexual reproduction in flowering plants and in humans involves both the female and male reproductive parts. Both involves the fusion of the female and male reproductive cells and when flowering plants or humans reproduce, they pass on characteristics from one generation to another. With this, you are ready for a short quiz. Pause the video to attempt the following question on your own. When you are done, continue with the video. A is the ovary, the female reproductive organ. B is the vagina and C is the womb. 
take note that only a singular ovary is labelled in the, this diagram. Therefore, remember to spell it as O-V-A-R-Y. D is the penis, the male reproductive organ, and E is the testis, spelled as T-E-S-T-I-S, -E as one testis is labelled in this diagram. The female sex cell is the egg, and the male sex cell is the sperm. Lastly, the egg develops in the womb in the female reproductive system. And that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in our next video and have fun learning! This video was brought to you by Project Love of Learning from Hwa Chong Institution.